All right, after expressing that drainage failure and improper infrastructure were the leading causes of much of the flooding experienced by communities and roadways when Ian passed us the other day, uh, MP Natalie Nita Garvey feels it's important that blocked drains be cleaned as the Atlantic hurricane season is now at its peak. She joins us now via Zoom to talk about what um, plans could look like, what she's suggesting, although, good morning to you, Madam MP. Good to see you this morning. morning. Good to see you as well. Yes, looking lovely as always. Boy, I feel like we've been talking about this for too long and we're talking and we're talking and nothing is happening here. It's much, much about as, a, as like most thing, other things. Um, we talk a lot. Um, I had a conversation recently with a former minister of local government, um, Desmond Leakey who probably most Jamaicans don't even remember that Desmond Liko was once um, a local government minister. And the issues existed then and, and prior to him. Um, I'm not saying we've not made any progress, but we have made very little progress over time. This time, I, am, I was a little shocked because I heard Minister McKenzie announce that we were prepared um as a government and as a response team to any eventualities we never even get the quarter of ian we got just the little water of ian and certainly it proved that we were indeed not prepared but then again i already knew we weren't prepared because the municipalities um which would normally receive an allocation prior to the um impending hurricane season to clean drains. It didn't happen this time around at all. And many of them who would use their parochial revenue funds or their emergency funds could not do so because those funds were coming in late. So in more recent times, those parochial revenue funds, which, which go to the municipalities, are two to three months late in coming. So even if you were going to use your emergency funds, which really are supposed to be used sometimes perhaps after the storm to, to respond to emergencies. You didn't even have that in some cases to be able to respond. Now, it has happened through successive governments. And so I'm not laying claim a blame game on any one government in particular. But when you come out and say you're prepared, be prepared, because then what happens thereafter is your responsibility. The truth is the drainage system across the country is really in a poor condition mm. across communities. This is where our people live, the majority of them. And as rain set up for fall, everybody is on edge because you are feeling that you're going to be flooded out, flooded out. Those people who are on high ground don't respond the same way to those people who are in low lying areas. And so we, we know those councillors who are representing those municipal corporations in those parishes, they know where the flood prone areas are. So equip them to be able to respond, not while the hurricane is going on, not after the hurricane is go has, has, has passed, but prior to, to allow for, I'm not saying it would, there wouldn't be any flooding anyway, because some of the water I saw, you would have probably gotten some flooding, but right. certainly it would have reduced the kind of flooding that we, we experienced. Um, and uh, some places that I saw flooded this time around, I've never seen flooded before. before. I'm mean, sorry, sorry to cut you, MP, but has a reason been given for for the delay in the, in the payment? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm still waiting for that reason as well, because I would have made the call. Um, several media houses would have called the minister and the ministry and no one has responded. And I'm not seeing that. In recent times, I've seen an announcement by the prime minister in parliament that he's going to be making some drain cleaning funds available. But while that is going on, another weather system is, is, is forming. And so we are, our people are on edge again, the same people who just got washed out, whose beds are not yet dry, who, who have to be having things on blocks. Whose, whose houses are already in poor condition, um, whose gullies are already saturated. 
and where where we build and where we don't build is a function of whether or not we are enforcing the law because new regulations won't change that. It's not that we don't have the things on the books, you know, Daily and Simone, we have it because we, ha we are people who are thinking people. It's how we enforce it. And if we're not enforcing it well, so that a man don't get stick up after him build, we should be monitoring so that we can tell people, this is a no building zone. And thereafter, if you build here, then, then you're, you're doing so at your own risk and that you can be prosecuted for doing so. Do you know we whether any officers either? We do not. Sorry, In I'm the entire Kinson and St. Andrew municipality, we have something like three or four building officers. We can't truly monitor. We can't truly be enforcing anything in that way. So we want to talk about the enforcement issue a little later on because who really is checking to see if what is happening ought to be happening? Um, but let's talk about this. In July, the ministry had asked the municipal corporations to establish a drain cleaning program of $600,000. You say those funds, right. is it that the funds were late or they have not yet been handed over? To the best of your knowledge, do you know where we are? Because as you mentioned, no. we're it, in the middle uh, of the season. Something else is coming and there will be something else behind that invariably. So are we... Didn't in, come. Say again? Did not come. Has not arrived at all. No. That did not come. That promised 600,000 that would have gone to assist um, the city mothers and fathers, is what we call the councillors. Um, you know, I served there for, for nine years as a councillor myself. Um, and it, it just didn't come. And, and I'm saying at this point, if, if you're saying that you are prepared, then that would have to be a part of your preparedness. Because just saying that the shelters are in place, and that the shelter managers are in place are critical parts. But the infrastructure to carry the volume, the volumes of water, which come with even a, a little weather system um, outside of a hurricane, would be critical. And that didn't happen. I find, um, MP, that there, it, it's on two levels. It's the areas that need cleaning, that's one. But it's also the areas that just don't have the infrastructure at all. Um, and no amount of cleaning is going to prevent it from being flooded. What's right. the long-term fix? Because I find every time there's flooding, it's th those are the same areas over and over again, and then we spend became, money to, to clean it, to repair. You are abso absolutely right, Delia. I became member of parliament in 2007. At that time, um, the minister had commissioned uh, a drain cleaning plan for the mm. entire country. Mm. That drain cleaning plan had a build out of what would take place across the 14 parishes and would take away water from those low lying areas to somewhere. Because it would work cleaning drain sometimes now, you don't even know where the water is to go because it was, we, we, I have a thing where I say, Jamaicans, we, we, we develop and then we plan. In other words, we decide so we're going to build one closer, we build those, and then we plan thereafter, yeah. right? Um, but that plan came out, and, and that plan had the possibility of taking away the water from the low-lying areas to the nearest river or the nearest um, body of water that could, have, that could take that, 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 that kind of water. Nothing has happened. It has not been implemented. And that's why when I started, I said, to, if we are not moving towards a comprehensive plan for, for rain, for water harvesting, so that when it rains two weeks later, we don't have drought, that we have to be lucky out for water. If we're not moving towards a comprehensive plan of proper infrastructure, then we are going to be redoing roads that we did this year, because when the drains are not cleaned, we find ourselves having to, to the water having to run on the road. We find ourselves having to redo the same roads instead of trying to do another road, another road. If we're not doing the proper garbage collection, which we have found ourselves in at this point, the garbage is invariably ending up in the same drains and blocking them as well. And so our, our entire system is out of whack. And that plan that they will, we will have is not being implemented. And so you're going to consistently have this level of flooding if we don't get to a place where we see the investment has been critical. Just like you would invest in anything else, the infrastructure, so we can protect the lives of our people and their property. All right.
I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Opposition spokesperson on local government, Natalie Nita Garvey, also MP. Thank you for shedding some light on this. We'll wait to see what happens and cross equip our fingers. Equip our counselors. Equip them. Equip them to do the work that you ask them to do. Yeah. Not just to carry the title, but to equip them to do the work of cleaning the drains and sparing our people. All right. Thank you so much, MP. We'll be back after this break, folks, to talk about the Governor General's Program of Excellence. Stay tuned.